Um, I'm Ross Prentice. I moved to Seattle in the School of Public Health and the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center in 1974 after growing up in Canada, Toronto area, and prior to moving, teaching at a Canadian university, University of Waterloo, in a mathematics faculty. So I learned about the biostatistics group here and the Hutchison Center's development uh, and became interested because I was looking for an opportunity to pursue an interest in medical statistics, biomedical research, and couldn't really do it from my teaching position in Canada at the University of Waterloo. So it, uh, from the very beginning, it was a marvelous opportunity to be here in Seattle. One of the first persons I met was Donovan Thompson, who was then chair of the biostatistics department. In fact, it was indicative of Donovan's generosity that when my wife and I came on a house hunting trip, Donovan and his wife Georgia made their house and car available to us for a week as we looked for the house that my wife and I currently live in and our kids grew up in. So even though I had a, a good position that I was leaving and congenial colleagues, Donovan really set a new standard as far as I was concerned in terms of uh, openness, generosity, good practical common sense. Um, so it was refreshing to come into a department. I suppose there were nine or ten faculty members in biostatistics in 1974. We had very open discussions. Everyone knew what was happening in, in the department, what the opportunities there were for expanding research, for recruiting new colleagues and staff, even knew what each other's salaries were. And I thought that was pretty good. And so I was fortunate to, to work with Donovan and the development of a biostatistics and epidemiology program at the Hutchison Center as well. Donovan headed that group for the first several years as as well and actually I took over that role in 1983 and it was just uh, a joy and a pleasure to work under Donovan's leadership in that context. Uh, we would sit around discussing research projects and he just uh, created a very accurate picture of what was important and what was frivolous. If the data in question had little potential, he'd say things like, you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear, and we'd move on to more valuable data. And the staff really warmed up to his leadership. He set a great example that continues to affect the groups both at the University of Washington in the school and at the Fred Hutchison Cancer Research Center in the Public Health Sciences Division many years later, even 15, 16 years after Donovan died. So I think from my perspective, as much as anyone, Donovan really uh, shaped our research groups, set a standard in terms of the how we value and interact with each other, what kind of practical goals makes sense, how we can be generous with each other and still make good progress. So Donovan is one of my main mentors and one of my heroes. During the course of that time, I also uh, got to know another major mentor and key person at both the school and the Hutchison Center, and that was Bob Day. So Bob was the, the dean of the School of Public Health when I arrived, and I had the chance to interact with him moderately during the first few years, but it wasn't until, I believe, 1981 or 82 when the Hutchison Center was in somewhat of a crisis, leadership crisis, Bob had been a member of the Hutchison Center board for a few years, 
and other board members turned to Bob and said, would you consider being the president and director of the Hutchison Center? It was the first time that someone from the public health area had taken that type of role, and Bob really took an institution that was had some great people, was in a great city, had great potential, but it wasn't clear that it was going to succeed and flourish at that time. Bob developed the administrative structure that was needed. He greatly encouraged our own public health group, which, as I mentioned, I was I succeeded Donovan in leading, became a separate division of public health sciences in 1982 under Bob's leadership. And Bob really encouraged the, the development, and that was development in biostatistics and epidemiology and what we called uh, cancer prevention research, and later a lab-based program called cancer biology. And currently we have two lab-based groups. So we became one of the larger public health groups, certainly located in a, a freestanding cancer research center. At the same time, the, the school was developing strongly and rapidly, and the biostatistics department that I was a member of grew substantially and became very well known in a number of areas, I think because of the the strength and productivity of its a number of its faculty, um, including persons like, uh, I'll mention those that were there when I arrived. Uh, it's too extensive to mention all, but Norm Breslow was there and had already established a strong reputation in statistical methodology and clinical trial coordination. Polly Feigl was there at the time. Dick Cronmill and Lloyd, Lloyd Fisher were starting their cardiovascular disease coordination efforts. Uh, current Dean Pat Wall was a younger member of the faculty at that time, as was I, I guess. Paula Deer was there. Don Martin was on the faculty. Um, not sure if I've omitted anyone else or not. I think Gerald Van Bell arrived the same time I did. So it was a relatively small department of, um, as I said, eight or nine faculty members, and it, it was an entrepreneurial and innovative group, and through research grants primarily, we developed the resources to recruit additional colleagues, and many others followed in the subsequent years that, that added much to the strength of the department, including persons like Tom Fleming, who I believe came in 1984 with strong leadership skills and um, following Norm Breslow's leadership for quite a few years during the 1980s. Uh, Tom took over as chair and was a very successful chair for quite a number of years up until just one or two years ago when Bruce Weir came in as leader and provided strength in statistical genetics, an area that the department was trying to develop, and is, Bruce is doing a very energetic role of building and strengthening the department. So even though I've been based at the Hutchison Center, I have a, a strong uh, tie and strong attachment and feelings about the department, and especially in my first years here in Seattle, the group at the Hutchison Center was very small, and I really drew most of my colleagues and collaborative arrangements and strengths from the School of Public Health and Biostatistics Department primarily, but not exclusively. Another person who I, maybe one of the very first persons I met in coming here was Noel Weiss, who was a young faculty member in the Department of Epidemiology, who spent part of his time at the Hutchison Center with the cancer, cancer registry that Donovan had located there. And Noel has uh, been a great colleague and friend all subsequent years and a substantial leader in the epidemiology department. I think under Noel's leadership, the epi epidemiology department experienced its greatest growth phase during the 1980s up through the mid-1990s and 
grew in both breadth and strength and I know Noel still does a lot of leadership and mentoring of students and younger faculty members and in my view is, is another one of the heroes in the School of Public Health. There are, there are many other heroes, some of whom were in a little bit older cohort than I was so I didn't get perhaps to know them as well but I've already mentioned some that I got to know closely. Actually another person I should mention was Gil Ullman who returned to Seattle. I've forgotten exactly which year it would have been I think the late 1970s and I believe became chair of uh, environmental health department at that time and when Bob Day uh, moved to the Hutchison Center as its president and director Gil took over as dean of the school and <clears throat> since I was in a somewhat comparable position at the Hutchison Center at that time and we had a meaningful affiliation agreement between our two groups as we continue to do today I, I had a lot of reason and a lot of opportunity to work with Gil and Gil was also very involved in the research program at the Hutchison Center starting research projects like the carrot trial which he headed large-scale cancer prevention trial so I, I learned a lot from Gil who has very diverse and strong research skills and leadership skills and I very much uh, appreciated that and so Gil I think added <clears throat> much breadth to the population science and cancer prevention, chronic disease prevention research that we're engaged in and had many contacts uh, away from Seattle that really I think helped the, the school and helped our groups in in many ways Another person that contributed substantially to my own enjoyment of uh, my many years here in Seattle, more than 32 years, is Maureen Henderson. Who, Maureen was located in the, the medical school as, uh, I think that's probably not quite the right description, she was, I believe, uh, associate vice president for medical affairs at the University of Washington around 1980 having served leadership roles elsewhere particularly the University of Maryland and Bob Day knew her well and so tapped Maureen to see if she would be interested in a, in a leadership role at the Hutchison Center in a program we were developing in cancer prevention research and Maureen also had many contacts throughout the country and the world and much pertinent experience in this area and she really uh, in a major way allowed us to develop a critically important emphasis for the Hutchison Center and for our public health sciences community. Uh, Maureen was able to attract the funds for the first cancer research program, let's see, what was it called? Cancer Prevention Research Unit in the country new funding opportunity through the National Cancer Institute and that continued for several cycles I think through about 15 years and by that time between the Hutchison Center and the school we had developed a strong interdisciplinary group of statisticians and epidemiologists and clinical persons, behavioral scientists and economists and others, lab-based scientists that really put us in a position uh, to do some things here in Seattle that, that few groups had the critical mass or the resources to do and at the same time as we both groups grew we had the strong need for additional space which is always a challenge I think it's been an even greater challenge in the School of Public Health than it has for us at the Hutchison Center but through the work of uh, Bob and Maureen and others, we were fortunate to to get a, a new building at the Hutchison Center in 2003 that 
many of our colleagues based in the School of Public Health spend part of their time in that context as well that, that has good quality and extensive office space as well as specialized labs for human feeding studies and exercise studies and wet labs for um, molecular diagnostics program that's developed and related activities. So we're very pleased and we look forward to the day, hopefully not too distant future, when the School of Public Health gets the, the new building and the expanded space that they so desperately, or we so desperately, deserve and need. So it's uh, interesting to speculate on, on why the biostatistics department in the School of Public Health has grown and achieved uh, national and international rep reputation. Um, I guess I can think of a few reasons why that's the case. One is the city that we live in. People like to live in Seattle and it really helps with recruitment in a major way. Of course, it's not sufficient. You need to have an environment here that's attractive and colleagues that you might like to work with. And I think that's the core of the, the reason for the department's success. I think the members of the department take responsibility for their own success and for their own environment to a substantial extent. Um, there's plenty to do, so people feel like they're being productive. So there's a research that uh, takes place as quite a high standard, both methodologic research, which I believe the department is well known for, as well as applied research, especially on the coordination of larger international, national and international projects. So I think it's the, the mixture of the, the application and the theory that is particularly important for the development and success of the department. And the department has not gone the way of some other similar departments elsewhere that have really focused more exclusively on maybe just theoretical developments without key faculty members devoting enough attention to how the, the theory needs to apply and what are the important questions, public health, medical, biological questions to be addressed. It also hasn't gone the way of some other departments of focusing exclusively on the application without ensuring that there's both time and an environment and and skilled young people who can identify and help address some of the, the methodologic needs. So the department has a nice mixture of, of application and theoretical developments that are mutually supportive and has had persons that are recognized leaders who have been willing to devote time and energy to both areas. And again, I think of persons like Norm Breslow, Donovan Thompson, Dick Cronwell, Gerald Van Bell, Tom Fleming. Again, I, I have to be careful in naming because there's so many people that merit mention when you start down this path. Another of my Colleagues based at the Hutchison Center fits in that category as Steve Self, who's also been active in the department in the school. So there's, I think, throughout our history, there's been key leadership persons who've really set a good standard of being able and willing to dive into time-consuming and demanding applications that that require one to get well beyond possibly your area of training to be able to be knowledge of, knowledgeable enough to identify the, the needs, methodologic and otherwise, and who also have the, 
the skills and the colleagues to be able to make progress addressing those needs and advancing the science and that duality and mutual support from those areas I believe is what the department needs in the future to continue to flourish and it isn't always easy to maintain that kind of an emphasis as the groups grow and people come in that might be attracted because they recognize one aspect or the other of the department and don't appreciate the spectrum and so it's part of the mentoring and development process to bring some of the younger people along to come to play those kind of leadership roles as well and it's gratifying to see that happening both in the department and in the biostatistics group at the Hutchison Center. One question I'd like to ask is um, it may well be that other disciplines such as epidemiology show a greater change of issues and methodologies and the like. Um, when uh, you first came here, uh, epidemiology, for instance, was uh, big into infectious diseases. It was something that Tom Grayston had uh, specialized in, and many of the early faculty um, had uh, a leading role in this uh, nationally and internationally. Is there any similar um, shift that has happened in biostatistics? Are there issues that you worked on um, that um, were predominant or prevalent when you first started in this profession? And are there new ones now? Could you speak as to how your discipline has changed um, during your time within it? I'm going to play off the beginning of your comments a little bit to bring in some epidemiology emphasis first, but I'll get back. But I would like to do that. Oh, from, yes, yeah. absolutely. Right. So when, when I first arrived in Seattle, the epidemiology group had had a um, major history of work in infectious diseases, and a chronic disease emphasis was just developing the cancer uh, registry that Donovan initiated through the Hutchison Center was one important resource for that activity and some of the large clinical trials and cohort studies that were subsequently initiated in cardiovascular disease were another. So during the course of those 30 years or so, the emphasis in epidemiology changed quite a lot. So initially, everyone was doing case control studies and exploring chronic diseases that hadn't been intensively studied before. And then over time, as those opportunities were expired, there was more of a movement on to cohort studies. Um, more recently, major emphasis on some of the new kinds of biologic data that are emerging um, in genomics and proteomics. And there's really a a parallel kind of development in, in biostatistics. Part of that is because of the interest in epidemiologic methods and practice. So in biostatistics, when I arrived here, there was uh, a strong emphasis on time to response data methods, regression methods for failure time data. There had been a very stimulating development uh, by UK statistician Sir David Cox that Norm Breslow and I and others were greatly impacted favorably by and wanted to pursue some of the implications of, of that work which we did for many years and it led to some volumes on case control and cohort studies by Norm and Nick Day and a volume on failure time data methods by my colleague now at the University of Michigan and myself, uh, Jack Kalbflesch. And <clears throat> So this was an important theme as time went on. Again, the, the new, new kinds of um, biologic data began to have 
an impact and at this point in time in the biostatistics department a number of faculty members uh, myself included are very much involved in the methodology and application of high dimensional SNP studies, single nucleotide polymorphism studies for trying to relate a person's genotype at a detailed level to the risk of various diseases, to studies that interrogate the proteome, say the pr plasma proteome from the blood plasma in relation to changes in intervention activities or treatments, changes in diet or physical activity, for example. These are relatively new frontiers that have a lot of potential and a lot of need for quantitative persons to, to have involvement. Throughout that long history, the, the methods for clinical trial conduct and coordination have also been a major theme with contributions from persons like Dick Cronwell and Lloyd Fisher and Catherine Davis and others. And <clears throat> methods for uh, exposure assessment and environmental health by persons like Gerald Van Bell and younger colleagues have also been very influential. And so the, the needs of population science and clinical research have really fueled the choices of methodology emphasis and research emphasis in the biostatistics department and in the statistical group at the Hutchison Center throughout that time frame. And that's, uh, I think, a really important aspect of the success that we've had, that we're in a position through our context in the school and the Hutchison Center to be aware and to be participating in the collection of timely and novel data and are in a position to to know the statistical development research needs, study design needs, data analysis needs perhaps earlier than others who might be in uh, environments that are um, further away from population science applications. And <clears throat> So it, it makes uh, our work have more direct relevance. It gives us a context in which we have immediate applications for the methodology developments that we do, and that in turn helps with getting research grants in those areas and having interesting projects for students and generally having an environment that is exciting and involved in timely and important research. Perhaps the most significant recent development in the school is the new Department of Global Health, a joint effort between the School of Medicine and the School of Public Health and Community Medicine. But in putting this history together, I've been struck by how involved the school has been over the years in um, global health, at least working uh, around the world on various health uh, efforts, public health efforts. Uh, the early work of Tom Grayston and then people like Irv uh, Emanuel coming in. Um, has any of your work or that of your colleagues had an international development and could it come under the rubric of global health? Right, so it's interesting to see the Global Health Department develop at the university as a joint effort between the School of Public Health and the School of Medicine. Our group at the Hutchison Center also has a, a history of substantial involvement in global health, and my colleague uh, David Thomas, who headed our epidemiology group at the Hutchison Center for many years, was a key leader in that area. David, for example, coordinated a series of World Health Organization-sponsored case control studies of steroid contraceptives and various cancers in a number of lesser developed countries. David also initiated and conducted a, a major clinical trial in the Shanghai area of breast self-examination 
in relation to breast cancer mortality. And that study of approximately 300, three to 400,000 women in the, the textile industry in the Shanghai area was a source of many interesting spin-off studies, both by faculty members at the Hutch and at the University of Washington. Um, so those, those are a couple of examples. We had ambitions to do some other kinds of global studies, um, which, at least to this point, we haven't been able to get funded, in spite of, I think, an overall pretty successful funding record. One of those that I was heading was uh, a proposal to to study diet in relation to the risk of various cancers around the world in 35 locations that had good cancer registries. The area of diet and cancer is one that is extremely challenging and fraught with measurement difficulties and so on, That so there's not a single best way or fully acceptable way that we can afford to get answers to important questions of diet and cancer and diet and chronic disease. And we saw the, the big international variation in cancer rates and risks around the world and the big variation in dietary habits as a major opportunity. And so some of us, David Thomas, myself, Marianne Rossing, and others, um, came very close to getting a, a very large study funded of that type, but it hasn't happened yet, and I hope that the idea won't be forgotten. We developed some good methodology for application of that type of study. My colleague and former student, Leanne Shepard, was active in those developments, and the context is ripe for learning about learning more about the reasons for these major international variations in cancer rates, 10, 20-fold variations, and the extent to which activities like diet and, and physical activity can offer useful explanations for those rate variations and give us some direction and stimulation in trying to find the ways to reduce the risk of major cancers and other chronic diseases. Ross, you have um, seen every dean of the School of Public Health uh, except for uh, Tom Grayston, our first dean, um, who was only there for a year as dean before he uh, stepped up to uh, becoming vice president uh, in this, uh, for medical affairs. I wonder if um, you could reflect on um, the achievements you saw through that time of the various deans. I know you've touched on Gil and um, Bob. Um, how about the current dean? Here we have a, a colleague of yours, um, a, a, a member of your own discipline, and indeed the first non-doctor uh, heading the School of Public Health. Um, would you comment, please? So I think the School of Public Health has been fortunate indeed to have good leadership throughout its history. And I think particularly a small number of very successful deans. So um, Tom Grayston was dean before I arrived, so I didn't have a chance to observe him directly, but I got to know Tom a little bit later and even worked with him on an infectious disease research project for some time. I know Bob Day was the dean when I arrived and I think really established uh, the school in a strong and favorable direction, getting the, each of the departments strongly established and research programs moving, I think encouraging collaborations among the various departments. And Gil Ullman brought a great deal of energy to the, the deanship and was personally very active with several departments and I think very aware of what was going on in each of the departments. Uh, very impressive to me that Gil would 
be so knowledgeable about the activities of what had become a rather a large faculty by that time and was equally knowledgeable about the rather large group developing at the Hutchison Center in Public Health Sciences. So Pat Well is an excellent dean as well. Pat was Gill's associate dean and I think was not intending to become dean but was had her arm twisted into it and Pat did some excellent things uh, right from the beginning of her deanship. I think really strategically organizing to maximize the the provisions for the the faculty and staff of the school. Um, so I remember specifically that Pat um, used the relationship between the school and the Hutchison Center where we had a meaningful affiliation agreement, for example, that involved discussions about faculty salary increases, recruitments. We would get together a couple of times a year, the leaders in the school, just to coordinate our efforts. But Pat saw the opportunity to use a modest disparity in faculty salaries that had developed in favor of the Hutchison Center to be able to arrange for noteworthy increases in salary for faculty members based in the school. And in my view, that, that kind of administrative approach is exactly how we should be working together. And Pat did so very effectively and I think has continued with that kind of initiative throughout her years as dean. And I believe Pat is equally effective at starting the planning and starting the fundraising for the new facilities that the school deserves and needs and is a very effective leader in, in those kind of important administrative roles as, as well as being a recognized scientific and statistical leader in her own right through major coordination efforts in cardiovascular diseases and other in other contexts. So we're very fortunate to have had such a series of strong deans and I hope Pat will continue in that role for some years ahead.